Well, I'm here today we will solve problem number two from the final exam of general physics two of fall 2023. So identical positive charges Q1 and Q2 are equal and equal to 16 nanocolumbers located on the x-axis symmetrically with respect to the origin O. At uh, x1 equal two centimeters, y1 equal zero, and x2 equal minus two centimeter, y2 equal zero centimeter for the charges Q1 and Q2 respectively, as shown in the figure on the right. Question number eight, find the magnitude and the direction of the electric field created by these two charges at the point P located on the y-axis at x equal zero and y equal two centimeters. Okay, before writing the equations and starting solving this kind of problems, it's highly recommended that you draw the electric field at the point P. So let's start by the point, by the point charge Q1. The charge is positive, so it produces an electric field outward because it's positive. So this is the electric field E1 at the point P. And this is the electric field E2 created by the point charge two at the point P. So you see that the two, the two fields have two components. Let's start by the first one. E1 has an X component, E1X, and has a Y component, E1Y. Okay? The same thing for E2 has an X component, E2x has a y component, EY, E2y. Okay, so what we can conclude here, we see that we see that Q1 equal Q2 and the distance R1 from the point of charge Q1 to the point P, it could it's gonna be equal to R2 and R1 equal to R2. How to conclude that? You see here that we have a right angle triangle. So the adjacent of this angle, let's say this is theta, and let's say this is theta. The adjacent of the angle theta is two and the, uh, and the opposite is uh, two. So the hypotenuse must be the same for the, two, uh, for the two triangles, okay? And how much this R1 equal R2? So it's gonna be two square root of two centimeters. Good. And Q1 is equal to two, so it's equal to 16. Uh, Nanocolumb. So what we can conclude, we can say that the electric field of the point P is going to be E1 plus E2 along the x-axis. So it's going to be EP along x, E1 log x plus E2 log x. The same thing long y. So it's the sum of the two vectors. E1y plus E2y. Okay. However, you see that, however, the magnitude of E1 is going to be equal to the magnitude of E2y because we have the same charge and we have the same distance from the point P. So what we can conclude, we can conclude that the X component of the total electric field is gonna be zero. Why? Because we have E2 along the y positive X axis and E1X along the negative I X axis, there's some gonna be zero. And these two components along the Y is gonna be the same. Why? Because the magnitude is the same and the angle is the same. So we can write E1 to E1 Y. Okay, so now to determine the magnitude of the electric field at the point P, it's gonna be two E1 long Y. If we take this angle is theta, that means our angle theta is also here. And that means our angle theta is gonna, gonna be here. If we want the Y axis, so we will write as a function of a sine, which is a, the opposite sign. So we can write equal to, multiplied by E1, multiplied by sine of theta, okay? And what, the, what is this E1 sine theta? It's the, the Y component of the electric field E1. Okay, so that we are done. Now the question is what? The question is what is the magnitude of the electric field and what is the angle theta? Let's start by the first one. 
P1 as magnitude is going to be K. Q1, an absolute value divided by R1 squared. So K is 9 times 10 power 9. Q1 is 16 nanocolumns, that means 10 power minus 6, uh, minus 9, sorry, divided by the distance R. And as we said, the distance R is 2 square root of 2 centimeter. So it's going to be 2 times square root of 2 times 10 power minus 2 squared. OK, so what we're going to get? We will get 1.8 times 10 power 5, 10 power 5 Newton per column. We are done. This is the first part. The second part is that we have to explain the sine. Sine theta, because we are talking about uh, we are talking about the, the y component, and we said that for the y component, if our theta starts from the x to the vector, it's going to be sine for the uh, it's going to be sine if we are looking for the y component and cosine for if we are looking for the x component. So what we're going to write, it's going to be opposite divided by hypotenuse. What is our opposite from the figure? Our opposite, the opposite of this angle is two centimeters. The hypotenuse is a square root of two multiplied by two, two square root of two. So let me write here. So it's going to be two centimeters divided by two square root of two. So I need here to convert to two meter because if we multiply 10 power minus two, one well, 10 power minus two, they will cancel each other. So that's all we have done. Now we will multiply two by E1 by sine theta. So what we're going to get? E at the point P is going to be 2 multiplied by E1. We said it's 1.8 times 10 power 5 multiplied by sine theta, which is equal to 2 over 2 square root of 2. And no need to convert, as we said. That's all. So the result is going to be 2.55 times 10 power 5 Newton per column. That's all. Okay, now what's about the direction? As we said, as we said, these two vectors will cancel each other, these two components. So our electric field is going to be along the y axis. So we can write along the y, the positive y axis. And we are done. So we can write that electric field E at the point P is going to be 2.55 times 10 power 5 j, the unit vector of the y-axis. Newton per column, that's all. OK, now let's move to the second question. And the second question, he said, find the total electric potential produced by these two point charges at the point P. Very good. Let's move to the electric potential. For the electric potential, B, V at the point P, it's going to be K, the sum of QI over RI. We're going to be K, Q1 over R1 plus K, Q2 over R2. So just we substitute. As we said before, R1 is equal to R2 and Q1 is equal to Q2. So we can write 2K, Q1 over R1. That's all. So after substituting by the numbers, we're going to get VP equal 2 times 9 times 10 power 9 times 15 times 10 power minus 9 divided by 2 square root of 2 times 10 power minus 2. We are done. So the result is going to be 10,182.3 volt. We are done. OK, just one step. Let's come back. The third question said, a negative charge Q equal minus 12 nanocoulomb is brought from infinity to the point P. Uh, the question said, find the work of the external force to bring the charge Q slowly from infinity to the point P. Very good. So you see that at the point P, this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis. At the point P, the electric field is up. OK, so this is OK. And the charge is coming from positive infinity. So. So the work done by the external force to bring a third point of charge from infinity to the point P is equal plus, not minus, delta U. 
Why this plus? This plus because the external force to bring a third point of charge force is opposite to the electric field E at the point P. Okay, so it's gonna be Q delta V and delta V is gonna be V, v at the point P minus V of infinity. As you know, V of infinity is zero. So what will be the external, the total external force, uh, external work? It's gonna be Q multiplied by V at the point P. V at the point P is already calculated in the previous question. So we're gonna write uh, minus 12 times 10 power minus nine. This is Q, what is it? Yeah, minus 12 on the column, multiplied by 10,182.3 delta V at the point P. So we're gonna get minus 1.22. 1.22 times 10 power four minus four joule. Okay, let's move to the uh, last question. Find the total potential of uh, energy of the system of the discharges Q1, Q2, and Q when it's spaced at the point P. So let's take another color. Okay, question D is asking about the total potential energy. Okay, so what would be the total potential energy? According to the formula, K, okay, the sum of I smaller than J, QI, QJ over RIJ. Very good. So what we're gonna get is gonna be K, factor of Q1, Q2 over the distance between one and two plus u1 u3 the distance between one and three plus u2 u3 the distance between two and three just you plug in the numbers and the calculator and you will get the result u total to be to be what minus six point 46 minus 6.46 times 10 power minus 5 joule. We are done. Thank you so much.